Hello, everyone. Uh, how does everyone feel? Because <laughs> I'm not feeling well. <laughs> but we will do it. Uh, anyways. Yes, yeah, so uh, my name is Tanya Butenko. Thank you for the um, introduction. And today we will talk about MusicCo.js or how communities change people's lives. Uh, all the story will be based uh, on my personal experience and my life journey uh, in the tech space. And um, I guess I will just start with uh, saying who is Tanya Butenko? That's me, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit older picture, so. Um, yeah, so. I'm a software engineer. Uh, I work as a software engineer uh, full stack uh, in a, a company named HireUp. I'm also founder and CEO of uh, uh, MusicCo.js, a non-for-profit organization that supports diversity in tech space. Uh, I'm also a Google developer expert and international speaker. But if you would come to me and tell me around six years ago that what I will be doing today is that I will be here on a like, cruise to Antarctica talking about the technical things, about tech communities and so on, honestly, I would be just laughing and saying like, no way, <laughs> like no way. Um, as uh, Serena said, like uh, I've been uh, working as a manager, I've been working as interpreter, I've been working as a teacher, uh, I've been doing like so many uh, things and I've been taking so many roles, uh, but I never saw myself uh, working in the tech space, like ever. I thought, no, it's not for me. Uh, my uh, ex-husband, he's a software engineer, and I saw him and I'm say, I was saying, you know what, one nerd in the family is enough. <laughs> like, no, no. Like, uh, sitting in the same room, uh, texting to each other. <laughs> I was like, no, that's not for me. I'm a social person. I like to talk to people. Uh, I like to be out there. I like to, uh, like, uh, to like, interaction, like, life interactions. Um, and I'm kind of, like, good in it. So what changed? Around six years ago, uh, like, we moved to Australia around eight years ago. And around six years ago, I've been working as a manager in one um, catering company in Australia. And uh, uh, you know, when you're changing up the country, when you're moving to a new place, uh, it is a bit hard uh, because uh, it takes time to find like a, a new friendships, like uh, to establish new uh, strong connections with uh, like uh, people uh, up there, find a new thing that you like, uh, and like uh, it's changed fully your life when you move to another country. So one day I was a bit bored and uh, um, I'm the person who like, loves a challenge all the time. So I came home and I said uh, to my partner, hey, you were talking about this coding stuff, so I think I'm ready to try. I'm just so bored that I, I want to try it. He said, okay. He gave me a video game. Uh, I think uh, if I remember it correctly, the name was Lightbot 2. So I had to move like a tiny robot on the screen, like step by step, level by level with a basic JavaScript code. Uh, in a three hours, I came back to him and was like, oh my god, I love it. <laughs> it's so much fun. I love it. Can I have more? Like, uh, uh, and he's like, oh, it's many levels up there. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Like, what's <laughs> next? What's next? He was like, wow, seriously? Like, oh, well, I don't know. I was not prepared for that. So he actually <laughs> started looking up for some different uh, online courses or different like um, other games and things. So, uh, and like the way how I saw that day, the coding, it was just a game. Uh, it's exactly like a game you have uh, like a task uh, to accomplish, like a level to accomplish. You have some kind of goal. You have um, tools to do that. Uh, you have like accomplishment in the end, right? Like, in the, like either it's like a green test or something like that, or something is working, something is appearing on your screen. So it is exactly like a video game. And um, like I still play this game till nowadays. Like I cannot live with, uh, without coding anymore. Uh, so I was keep working as a manager at that time, but uh, my free time every day I was coming back home and I was like trying to do something. I was putting my hands on anything I could reach. It was a Python, it was C++, it was C, it was Scala, it was Haskell, it was JavaScript, it was Ruby. <laughs> oh, just name it. <laughs> it was everything, like databases, algorithms, like anything I could find like that time on Coursera or like... Uh, um, uh, different like coding websites like I was just like doing everything. I just really really enjoy that around uh, But still I was not thinking of changing my career So it was like a cool hobby to have and of course I was like as an adult I was still thinking about like so what will be in the future Maybe I should check on it and every time I was going and checking up online um, Any jobs descriptions or anything everything was you need to have education in the tech uh, like related education you need to have at least five years of experience, so we hire you as a junior developer. I was like, what? Like, what? 
Well, so of course I was like seeing those advertisements and saying like, uh, no, I'm too old for this shit. And like, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm not going into this industry. It will stay my hobby. So what changed? What changed my mind? <coughs> communities did. When I was uh, introduced to technical communities and I went uh, on uh, like a, my first event, second event, uh, it was some Node meetups, it was JavaScript meetups, uh, then I was introduced to women who code and so on. And uh, when I was going there and people were asking me, so what do you do? Uh, first, it was like a bit confusing for me, so I was just saying, oh, I'm just with him here. And uh, uh, my partner was saying, oh, no, sh she's actually code. And then it was like an interest from people and they were asking me, and she, uh, he was saying, she just code in her free time, so it's the, her hobby. And when I was like, uh, start talking up with people more, like uh, being more introduced to the community, meeting up different people, having a different conversation, so I find out that, yeah, there is a people there uh, who work as developers who does not have a formal education in tech space. And also there is like a people who've been like self-taught and they're doing really great. And uh, those people start helping me and supporting me in those questions and they were saying that, look, you know a lot, you, you actually can go and work. And the communities uh, was this trigger that helped me to understand that, yeah, probably I should try, because I like it, I'm doing it every day, and why not to have like a well-paid job that is actually a hobby? <laughs> it's like a dream of every person. So I was like, yeah, okay, great, thanks for support. That's how community changed my life. So today I will talk about them, about communities, and how I decided to be involved, and why, and what those communities given to us. And we will talk about what they are, why do we need them, and how to be a part of the community and how to contribute to them. So first of all, what is a community? Um, I'll just give like a brief uh, description that I took somewhere from Wikipedia uh, that I really liked. So community, uh, it's like not just a group of people. Community is actually a condition of sharing or having certain attitudes and interests in common. So technical community is really interesting and uh, unique, uh, like is, is in a very interesting space uh, because technical community does not have to be in one place. People do not need to be in one location. Technical communities can be like a global one. For example, JavaScript community uh, or like any other language community, it is a global community. And of course you do have like a local ones and you do have different events happening. Uh, even if you go and uh, uh, like different websites, like a GitHub, like a, it is a community as well. Uh, Stack Overflow, it is a community. So um, it is a condition of sharing. So the people share the information. That's how communities are. And what is Muses Code JS? So um, I'm quite sure that many of you hear like this name first time. And uh, um, so I will just give a brief uh, history and story like about the, of the community. Uh, as I said, I was like when I was exposed to the communities, uh, I find it like really interesting. But uh, sometimes on some of the events, I was coming up and it was talks uh, on meetups. And uh, as a beginner, I was not always understanding what's going on, like uh, what they're talking about, or sometimes just seems like oh, I know this word. <laughs> 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 so that's how it was at the beginning, of course. And um, when I was introduced to Rails Girls and Women Who Code organizations. I was pleasantly surprised because uh, they were not really holding much of the uh, talks, meetups, but they were holding different type of workshops, like hands-on workshops. And I was like, wow, I really like it. I really like it because I can come there and I can do something practical. I also, there is like people around who are specialists and they can help me up if I have any question. But same time, I, anytime I can go home and I still have it on my machine and I can still continue. I can ask for some additional tasks uh, and like maybe my partner can help me up and like uh, give me some ideas what I can, like how I can, extend to this uh, um, like application or exercise or whatever it's like I was doing there. And uh, it just stays with me and I can uh, do it in my free time. I can do it if I don't feel myself secure enough to ask the questions, I always can again go back home or like stay on my own, Google for the things, take as much time as I want. But unfortunately, as I said, it was only women who code and Rails girls uh, that time in Australia. The only organizations that were giving uh, like, a, mm, like practical workshops. Uh, it was, uh, we also had once a year an old school. Uh, an old school, it was like for 100 people, it was like 90 guys coming up and maybe like a few women. Mm, it was still fine, but it was happening once a year and not that often. So 
I was thinking about it all the time and I was thinking like, oh my God, that would be so great if we would have more communities like that, if we would have more workshops where people can come and uh, do practical coding, like something practical. Um, and uh, at the beginning, of course, working as a software engineer, I did not really have much time because every day after job, I was coming back home and like having the list like that of things that I did not know during the day <laughs> and like sitting and like reading through the stuff, playing around, uh, like checking up on the code, uh, seeing like, doing some additional things. So that was like my first few years, you know, like being in the industry. And uh, I loved it, like, uh, so it was, uh, it was no burnout. Uh, it was just, I, I really enjoyed that time. And uh, when I realized that one day I'm like coming home and I'm not really having this list of the things that I don't know that I need to like continue reading on. And I was like, hmm, now I have a bit more time, more free time. So what I will do, I reached a uh, uh, woman who code and I said, hey, guys, like, do you need help? And they're like, yeah, always. Like, I was like, okay, I, I think I have a time and I can come up and um, help you up with whatever is needed. So that's how I get uh, involved with the communities and I start helping up women who code to organize different type of events uh, uh, in Sydney. Uh, I also um, joined Node School uh, and start like, uh, uh, like holding those uh, workshops as well. No, was not really big uh, fan of Rails, but I was still coming up and mentoring there. <laughs> um, and then with the time, um, at Women Who Code, we was, uh, every single event, we were asking people what kind of things uh, you would like to see on our workshops, what technology you would like to see, uh, what you would like to do. And every single time, we had like a massive interest in JavaScript, because nothing was happening with JavaScript uh, in JavaScript world, like especially technical events, only the old school thing that was happening once a year. And of course, uh, we as an organization, Women Who Code, who is like all around the different technologies and uh, soft skills as well, uh, we could not afford just like to hold um, like a big series of JavaScript workshops or anything around the JavaScript world. So I had this thought and I was like, hmm, okay, so what I will do, I will do the same what I did with Women Who Code. I will try to find organizations that are already doing things for uh, women or in general like uh, around JavaScript and bring it to Australia and we'll start something in Australia. And you know what, surprise, surprise, it was not a single women organization or like diversity organization uh, in JavaScript at that time. It was 2016. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, for me, it was a really big shock. And especially knowing the massive demand uh, for JavaScript developers and uh, massive demand for diverse developers in JavaScript space and not knowing even much of the women in JavaScript. That was a bit like upsetting for me. So I decided, okay, we will do something and we will do, we will start something new. If there is not there, let's do it. That's how Node Girls were born. And of course, no one knew what Node Girls is. And Node Girls, of course, was by analogy with Rails Girls, um, like uh, uh, Janko Girls, Rails Girls. It was like a bunch of different organizations across the globe. And uh, Node Girls were like name was born the same way. Uh, of course, no one knew about it at the beginning, and then what I did, uh, I just made an event, and we said, we just uh, decided to combine event and do the Node School workshop for women. So, in, uh, like, with support of Women Who Code. So, everyone knew those two organizations. And um, as any kind of event that we hold in Sydney that is for free, uh, we all we normally have, like, 50-50% like, people show up on the event. Same time, it's like a full day workshop uh, on a weekend. And um, so it was like a really big surprise to us organizers when on the day we had 124 women show up. And we were like, damn, we need to order more food. <laughs> because we were expecting to have around 50 people maximum and we had around like 150 people signed in. So we thought like, yeah, 50, maybe up to 70-ish, but definitely it's a weekend, so probably it will be 50 people. So that was our expectation was. And we had around 20 mentors for this like 50-ish women that we were expecting. And wow, we had 124 women came up on the first day, and it happened on 9th of July, 2016. Uh, when that's where we made announcement about the Node Girls. And when we uh, like sent the questionnaire and like uh, got the feedback, Everyone was saying, we want more of events like that. And we said, okay, you want it, you will get it. And we start doing events every second month. And we thought, okay, it was the first time because everyone wants to like, learn JavaScript things. It was just the first time. No. In Sydney, we did not have any single event when we had less than 100 people. 
Not a single one. So demand is still there and we are running for three and a half years. And the number is growing and if we were not closing up the registrations, we would definitely have a bigger numbers. Uh, so it is hard to manage, of course, but we are trying our best. So that's how everything started and what we are now. And uh, now we are operating in seven cities across Australia. We have more than 50 events per year that we hold. We have more than 6,000 followers. I'm quite sure it's bigger now. <laughs> I didn't check. Uh, more than 500 mentors uh, that are registered with us. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing about it is that uh, we noticed that uh, uh, the number of women mentors started growing in the last year in all the cities. Uh, why? Because we do try to encourage uh, our attendees to come uh, back and mentor with us. Um, and we also have uh, three internship positions. And the internship positions I put in the end because this is like a really interesting moment that we are doing. And uh, you probably know it's like a lot of different internship um, uh, programs out there, graduate programs and so on. But uh, why we're different? Um, coming up with my background, with no uh, technical education, uh, and thanks God I had a support of my partner. So you have to, like, I went to academy for three months. Uh, I had to quit my job. I had to pay a lot of money for that. But not everyone is able to do that. Not everyone has enough funds to do that or time, commitment, and so on. What if you're a single mom? Will you have a time for that? Will you have a money for that? No, you will not. So our internship, uh, we provide uh, two women with no technical background, uh, with no technical background at all. And uh, we give them uh, around three, six months position in the companies that is paid, of course. And uh, we uh, ask the companies to have a proper uh, like roadmap for them and also like mentors. And we also do mentorship with them uh, outside of that company just to check with them like if how everything is going, if they have any questions, maybe they're afraid to ask, or if they're afraid to ask why. Uh, so we're kind of trying to help them up and guide them through the process as well. And this is an amazing initiative that uh, was proven that it works, uh, especially when we had the internship positions in such, co in such companies as Netscout, uh, and like a big security uh, company, right? And they give a full access to a person who never been doing anything in the coding. Yeah, we're still alive, right? So internet still works. So. Um, so because of that, of course, uh, we have a really nice reports and uh, nowadays like it's more and more companies who are interested in that. Everyone is interested, but everyone is scared. So this kind of reports really help. What about the future? In the future, we are planning to be worldwide. Domination, so you know who to join. <laughs> we also uh, looking up all the time for innovative approach uh, in education and uh, uh, in advertisement and uh, um, like pretty much in everything. Why? Because uh, our audience uh, is different and uh, you need to remember which channels you are sending the information through because our organization is uh, oriented uh, not only on support of the people who are already in the industry but also to bring a new people to the industry to show them that coding, like to demystify the coding in general and uh, to, uh, to try to show people that uh, it should not be a bias about for what gender this job is. Job is a job. It does not matter what gender you are. Uh, and of course, because of that, we need to be creative when we are making advertisement about the events, when we are making the workshops, uh, because we need to remember that we should not be making any assumptions when we create something for complete beginners. Because even uh, like Node School, I really love those resources, but I remember my first uh, workshop with introduction to JavaScript, uh, JavaScript for complete beginners, and I open it and I read, um, uh, declare, uh, like define a variable and assign it a value. I was like, what? I was like, I understand every single word, but what do I need to do? <laughs> and it's the first phrase. I was like, I don't know what you want me to do. Um, so of course, like we are trying to uh, like redefine these kind of things and um, work hard on the advertising and on the workshop, on the materials, on the way how we communicate with people and companies as well. Um, and uh, also we are thinking, uh, planning about like to do some educational platform in the future so people can work uh, independently on their machine. But uh, the beauty of JavaScript is that uh, you don't need to do any installations and this is like really easy for beginners. Uh, so they just like bring their laptop and do something. Of course, if you do like a uh, more backend things, you need to think about it. But otherwise, you just open your laptop and you work. You have your browser, you can do it. Like you have internet, you can just do it like this way. You don't even need to have a code editor for that. And people are super um, happy when you open the console for them and you change the things and you show, 
hey, you can change this page and like go to the news page and put your face up there. Make a screenshot and send it to your friends. And they're like, wow, are we just we're hacking the website? I was like, mm hmm <laughs> yes, <laughs> we did. <laughs> just if you refresh, it will be gone. <laughs> so it's only for now. But uh, that's how you just make people excited about those things and uh, uh, they get like really interested in that. And uh, it's very visual. Uh, when it's very visual, it's more interesting as well. It's not just numbers and uh, like mathematics or something because that's what most people think coding is. It's just like mathematics and they say like, oh, I was bad in mathematics in school. It's like, hmm, <laughs> you can still try. Well, so why do we need the communities? Uh, one American great anthropologist, Margaret, Margaret Mead, once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed. It's the only thing that ever has. So what it means, it means that uh, people who are in the community can change the things. We can change, uh, we have a power to change uh, the way how the technology will be like uh, in the future. We have a power to change the way how diverse uh, or not diverse uh, will be our like, uh, um, like list of developers, like a list of people who are working in the industry and so on. And uh, all this kind of things, all the changes in the world were always starting with a small group of people. And same about the communities, like if you don't see something around you, just start it, just do it. Communities help us to self-grow. And I have like a bunch of people here, it's not all of them, but it's just a bunch of people whose lives were changed by our community. Uh, Karen from Melbourne, uh, she used to be an accountant, now she's a software engineer. Leah Serenich from Sydney, she used to be a recruiter and we took her on a dark side, so now she's a developer. <laughs> <laughs> now she's a software engineer, uh, like a cloud engineer, and uh, she is also one of our core team in Sydney. Jen Hilton and uh, Alex Green, uh, like really great friends of mine. Uh, they, I met them when I was working in the catering business. They were waitresses with, uh, from a bad background uh, with uh, no <laughs> proper education, just like a high school, and that's pretty much it, like no future. They are software engineers now. Rachel, uh, she is like all around Australia, so <laughs> she is a recruiter but now she calls in, her, calls in her free time. So I think like, we'll take a little bit, yeah. We have Anvesha, uh, absolutely amazing person. Uh, she is like moving around the city uh, right now as well. I met with her a couple of years ago when she wrote me and she said, hey, I saw what you're doing in Sydney and it's so amazing. When are you coming to Brisbane? And I said, I will be bloody honest with you. We will go there when we will have a person who will take responsibility to lead the chapter. And she was like, okay, so what, what does it involve like, in it? Uh, maybe I will find someone. So I said, shall we have like a video call? We talked with her a few times. In a month, she wrote me back and said, you know what, I think I will do it. I was like, yay. So she's working as a software engineer now. Uh, she's getting like amazing offers. Uh, she's been nominated and won like a, quite a few awards in the technical space. And she also got um, a technical community um, ambassador award in the Queensland state uh, due to the work that she was doing with our organization. Uh, Shaila, uh, she's been working with many jobs. Uh, she's a single mom of three. She's working as a software engineer now. And the last but not least, uh, it's uh, Jaden and Priya. It was our first two interns uh, whose life was changed as well. And uh, uh, Jaden on the left on the right, right, on the right. Uh, she used to be a pharmacist, now she's a software engineer, and Priya used to be a teacher, now she's a software engineer. And as I said, we do have more stories like that to say, to tell and to show. Communities help us to get more confidence because uh, that is a place where you're coming up and you're talking up with the people and you understand that there is something that you can tell to others that uh, others are interested in. Because uh, of course, like uh, us being a public speaker, we know that the hardest one is to understand what people want to hear or like uh, uh, what do you know that others don't? Because we think that if I know it, everyone else knows it as well. That's how we normally think. But then you go to community, you meet with the people, you talk with people, you hear someone else giving a talk and you get these uh, ideas to come and talk and do the things. 
uh, as a part of our community, we're also trying to encourage our women to go on the stage and to speak publicly. And uh, we provide like a really big arena for them to do that. We're always inviting uh, like, and contacting personally some of our you know, members and asking them, hey, what do you think? Like, we will have like, a next workshop like, in, like, in February 20s. Uh, would you like to facilitate the workshop? Like, you've been on this workshop many times. Would you like to facilitate it? Like, we will spend a time with you and walk through the material if you have any doubts. And still, we never had anyone say no. Everyone says, oh, yeah, but I'm afraid. Like, that's OK. We'll just walk through. Anytime you can say no, that's all fine, right? And you know how friendly community is. So being friendly and inclusive, that would help a lot to people stand up on a stage and say something and do something. Communities give an opportunity to share the knowledge. And this is super important. Uh, very often, people don't understand, why do I need to go and mentor somewhere? Like, why do I need to do that? Like, what is it for me? Like, uh, um, I'm a highly paid specialist. Uh, uh, that's how much my hour cost. So why do why I will be going and spending my time, like on my day, for example, mentoring others and sharing my knowledge for free? But the thing is that uh, we always uh, like underestimate this opportunity that we have with communities like that. Uh, giving back to community is really important. Uh, it does give you like a feeling of uh, satisfaction. Uh, you feel like you've been a good human. Yeah, good. <laughs> you did well today. You did something good. <laughs> but uh, same time, I've been seeing it so many times now, uh, especially when a senior developer is coming up and mentoring complete juniors. Very often, they just like stand and like, huh, how do I explain that? And it's a person who never been coding before. And you just uh, uh, tell them about functions like uh, uh, loops and like uh, if else statements. And uh, the person stands like, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> like, what is function? Function is a function, right? <laughs> So it takes you a time to understand that you need to reevaluate what you know and uh, to go back and find a way how to explain the things to beginners. And why it's useful for you? It's useful for you to refresh your brain uh, at like first place, to refresh. Second one is uh, we all are working with uh, uh, developers of different level. Is it like junior, uh, mid, senior, and like uh, even more senior? And uh, when we are working in the team, it is like really crucial kind of knowledge to have and crucial skill to have to be able to work with the junior developers in the team. And uh, of course, like uh, many of us working with the juniors all the time. So coming up and mentoring on those events like helps a lot. And of course, uh, communities is a networking and socializing. And this is really important moment as well. Uh, not uh, only for our like, uh, uh, well-being, our mental health things, but also uh, being a part of community, being a part of something bigger than we are, it always uh, gives us satisfaction and it always makes us feel better. And uh, that's the place where we go, we meet a people with similar interests in something. Uh, we don't need to have all the interests the same, right? We're all different. We all have different interests uh, and likes in life, but still we find the people who has uh, who share the same ideas. Uh, we are meeting people uh, who will be either our future partners uh, or it, will be like, it, it can be like our future co-workers or maybe it's our ex-co-workers. And uh, like it, it is really like important moment. And for our communities, uh, it is really important because we have a lot of women coming up and uh, many of them saying like, oh, I just heard you telling about this story about your life or they're just like, oh, I just heard you were talking about something. I'm going through the same kind of things. And they start talking, and you see, and then like people make connections, make friendship there, and uh, they get this kind of support. Because uh, in Australia specifically, we are the country of immigrants. Uh, most of the population of the Sydney is uh, people from other countries who came recently or like within the last uh, maybe 10, 15 years. So it means that like uh, even like people who come fresh, as I was saying about myself, um, it takes time to establish connections and friendships, and you can feel lonely and abandoned, and it is not good. So coming up on an event like that helps a lot. It helps you to find the people, to uh, find the people from your own country, uh, like with a similar background, or with a similar interest, or with a similar experience. Good. Are you excited about the communities? Yes. yes. Are they important? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. So how you can give back? And I will run a bit ahead and say everyone can contribute to community. It's a lot of different ways how we can do that. 
And it doesn't matter if you are extrovert or introvert person, there is still a way. Communities, events, and workshops, uh, the one that I was saying at the beginning. Um, look around you, uh, like um, if there is any communities that you already like, uh, that you are part of, and uh, just check with them, do they need any help? Uh, being a part of community, it does not mean that, uh, it does not only mean that you need to like go and organize something or help with organization of something. No, you can actually contact people and say, hey, I'm looking for a speaker. Because that's how community live as well. You do need to have a speakers and uh, trust me, as being a part of the Node Meetup uh, co-organizer in Sydney, when we hold event every single month, it is super hard to all the time look for people to give some talks. So you're actually chasing people. <laughs> Hey, can you come and talk? Can you come and talk? And especially, it, it happens really often that uh, you just have the same people coming up within the time, right? But you still want to have like a fresh blood, <laughs> like a fresh faces coming up and telling something new. People with different experience, with different background to come and uh, tell something interesting, something new for us to hear. So going and talking on local meetups, it is also being a part and of community and like support the community. Because just coming up and listening, we're taking all the time, but we need to give back as well. Because community is like a two-way road you need to give uh, in order to get back. Otherwise, communities will not exist. Mentorship and coaching. Uh, you can either come for different workshops and mentor on them, coach, or you can do a personal mentoring or coaching uh, of someone. Or if you do not have that much time, you can do the same kind of thing right at your work. When, as I was saying, we pretty much everyone has some more junior developers like, uh, who are working with us. And uh, helping to like someone to um, like mentor them or coach them on their road uh, to support them, it is also a part of supporting the community. And uh, if your company does not have uh, anything like that, a graduate program, for example, or mentorship program or coaching program, um, you can raise up those questions with the seniors and uh, to see how it can be created and how if, if it will be beneficial for people because uh, mentorship and coaching is not only for juniors. Uh, mentorship and coaching is for everyone. Uh, even like uh, more senior uh, people uh, or who are taking senior positions, they are still uh, looking for coaching sometimes as well. Good, uh, internship programs, same. Uh, if you don't have something like that in your organization, you can talk with uh, your boss and say, hey, there is like, a, uh, it's a lot of resources are, uh, like online already about the success of these programs, uh, of success of hiring a person with no technical background uh, or even with like graduate or like a junior developers. Because everyone of course wants to have only senior developers, right? But it's not possible. <laughs> we need to face the reality. And especially when we talk about the diversity uh, and inclusivity of our tech space, uh, we cannot just, everyone wants like a senior women developers everyone and I was like how do you think where they come from <laughs> if you go and take uh, the like uh, uh, you're looking for a senior woman developer you're grabbing up from different companies you get you get your quota right like yay KPIs are fulfilled like we have like uh, more women now in the company but is it truly being supportive is it truly being like a part of diversity and support the diversity in your organization no it's not it is just shuffling women around from company to company, proposing them a better conditions. It is not uh, a contribution to diversity, not at all. So if your company really wants to contribute, you need to take those like people, those specialists, and grow them up to bring them to the industry. That's why those kind of uh, internship programs are great. And uh, as I said online, it's a lot of resources about that, about success of the programs. So you can definitely show some numbers and some things to your like managers. Online channels. Yeah, coming back to the thing, if you are introvert person and you don't really like to be around people much <coughs> and you don't like, maybe you feel uh, anxiety when you're coming up on events that has a lot of people up there. Uh, so it's normal, uh, you still can contribute, you still can help to community, and it's like online channels. Online channels, uh, again, it's like really broad topic. It can be either you contact the organization and tell them like, hey, again, what kind of help do you need? But I can do it online. So maybe people need mm, just someone who will help them curate the Twitter account, 
or maybe they just need someone like uh, to post the events uh, or maybe write a blogs about something. They will send you pictures and uh, you will help them up with materials. Or maybe uh, even just going on Stack Overflow and giving a nice answers, not like, oh man, this question was asked a thousand <laughs> times. Like you actually just spend the time for just to write that. And uh, this online things like Stack Overflow, it is a community as well. When you see, when you come there, when you see the questions and the answers, seriously, it just makes my hair just like go up sometimes. And you're like, wow, this is a junior developer. This person does not know. Maybe they're just like doing this a hobby and they wrote a question. They don't even know what they're asking. That's how you are like at the beginning. And it's hard. And when you have such kind of rough answer, that's not encouraging you at all. Not at all. So that's why like <laughs> let's shape this community and go and give like a proper answers for people. Okay, and in the end, uh, as a bonus, how to attract more diverse auditory <laughs> to your community. First thing is impression. Uh, this is a really important moment, uh, <coughs> and uh, as we all know, um, the first impression is very important, and uh, the name of the organization that you are doing, of your community, the way how you advertise, and what kind of language you use. So the reason why we changed our name from Node Girls to Muses Code GS. We had a tons of reasons for that. We want, to, uh, first of all, we wanted to get rid of the node part because it was confusing a bit for people uh, who are new to programming. But secondly, it was like more technically confusing, and we wanted to get rid of the girls part as well <laughs> because uh, of its uh, like a, a demolition meaning. Uh, and uh, same time, we were we are organization not only for girls or women. We are an inclusive organization for all the gender minorities and for all genders. Uh, so we include everyone on our events. So we wanted to get rid of all these kind of things. And same time, if you were Googling first time for Node Girls, it would give you a Node Girls. Did you mean a Node Girls? <laughs> yeah, was not good. <laughs> That's how we, changed, we decided to change our name and uh, to be more diverse and inclusive about it. Um, I guess I don't need to explain about like, why it is important, the way how you advertise your event and the language that you use, like uh, with all these like, heroes, like ninjas. Coding ninjas and so on and so on. Personalities, uh, personality of the community and personalities who represent the community. It is very important as well. When you see that uh, organizers of the conference, for example, are of like diverse, you are more likely to apply there as well. Uh, if you are from the diverse group, uh, same about the event. If it were like event and only men were holding the event, hmm, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that the much women would be going. And the interesting moment was um, when uh, we just started with the organization and uh, I was going making advertisement uh, because I have like a Russian background. We start having more people with Russian, like women with Russian background coming up on our events. Uh, my second organizer who joined the team, uh, she's Indian, from India. And uh, when she started going up and making advertisement, we got more Indian women coming up on our event. And then Brazilian and next and next and next. So we have like really diverse teams in every single city that we have, and we do have like a guys as a part of our organization team as well. Uh, by this diversity you show in that environment is safe. Uh, you also need to show all the time and tell people that it is okay to make mistakes, it is okay to ask the questions, we're here all to learn, we're all learning at the moment. Uh, event personality and organizers and people who announce. Of course, I would not be able to do all of it what I did like uh, on nowadays without my amazing team and it's not all the team, by the way, but because we are uh, still reshaping some of the cities at the moment, but it's like a bunch of those amazing people who are helping me to organize those things across the country. And the last but not least, the involvement. It's a hands-on workshops. It's the way of how you interact with people. It's uh, the networking time, uh, the time that you spend with people who are coming, when you're organizer, when you are workshop facilitator and so on. It is very crucial to have this time to spend it with people, not be like, oh, I'm celebrity here, you know, I don't have a time for you. <laughs> so you need to be involved into that. Uh, always stay in touch with people when they ask you about something. I've been writing to so many organizations and it was so many times no one ever responded to me when I was proposing a help. So it's not cool. And always ask for feedback because we don't know what we don't know. Food. <laughs> Food diversity is very important, <laughs> very important, especially if you hold uh, like a long event, like a full day event. This is like really <laughs> crucial. 
to have a diverse food, to know about people's, uh, to remember about people's uh, dietary requirements, allergies, and so on. And in the end, I just want to say that um, community, um, as I was saying, it's a really powerful tool that we have. And uh, being of this uh, community is a privilege uh, to be like in it and uh, to be able to communicate with so many amazing people. And it is a power, and you know, as like with any power comes a big responsibility to, and our responsibility is in front of the people who will be in the future in the community, uh, or who will decide to come to community, or who will decide to be uh, a part of it in general. So don't forget about it. Thank you very much for your time, and I will go and have a seat. <laughs> <laughs>